the monolith from beyond space and time, is the deep end of the weird horror pool, pure cosmicism, and the most intense and pure concentration of weird in the entire Lamentations of the Flame Princess catalog. Monolith is perhaps the adventure which was most extensively playtested out of all the Lamentations of the Flame Princess published adventures. I spent 2011 touring this thing around Europe in the run-up to its release, of course being largely about a mind-constructed space and not just a dungeon or mansion or even a hex crawl, there were problems communicating the concepts to the audience and the adventure has basically confused everyone since it's released. Because it isn't a dungeon, it does require much more improvisation and flexibility upon the part of the referee than any than the other adventures presented here or anywhere really. But watching players flail around with no clue what to do and then seeing that moment of oh is totally worth it. This adventure is also unique that it doesn't matter if the player characters are level 0 or level 100 or anywhere in between, it plays exactly the same. Hello, this is your RPG Archivist, and uh, that last little bit, I, I'm not going to reshoot it. Uh, I usually end with the author's name on that. That's James Edward Raggy the Fourth. I'm not going to reshoot it because I am lazy. Um, <laughs> so, we are on the final adventure for Lamentations of the Plain, Flame Princess Adventure Anthology Fire. And it is the monolith from beyond space and time. Wow. <laughs> this is jaw-dropping. Ah. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Ah. Uh, okay. This is... Ah. Uh, went too far. Yes, I didn't mark my pages. Oh, look. Here's some nice, fun art in the interior for the monolith from beyond space and time. Uh, so, um, a valley appears out of nowhere, somewhere in your game world. Doesn't matter what game world it is. And that's one of the big bonuses of this adventure. Uh, you could put this in probably any, any game world. There are very few that I don't see it not working. I mean, maybe some of the comedy based ones, but any fantasy world and probably not a few sci-fi worlds, this adventure will work. Uh, so this valley just appears uh, out, of, <laughs> out of nowhere and it's assumed that the players are going to be interested enough to investigate this uh, valley. And I tell you what, the journey uh, is as good as the destination in this. Because just getting to the center of the valley where you will find the monolith from beyond space and time. Uh, just the journey is a trip. And then when you actually get to the monolith, oh boy, that, that is something. See, the valley is just one half the adventure right there. Uh, you have a lot of effects for, of uh, the monolith. Space and time are altered in the valley. You could run into encounters more than once in this, uh, in your trip to the monolith. And it's a little weird, uh, because this isn't just, oh, more goblins, oh, more orcs, no, it's, wait a minute, this is deja vu, this is, this is, didn't we just do this? <laughs> and, uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, locations and encounters in the valley. Uh, something else I like about this, you can make your own 
encounters, and uh, you got to be at least as weird as the encounters in the valley are. At least as weird. But you could do it, and there's some good, good crunchy stuff in here. Um, yeah. The uh, Owl Service was a good one. Uh, the Plateau is okay. It's kind of a trip. Uh, it really emphasizes how uh, space and time are altered in the valley. Uh, the pool. Uh, the pool was just disturbing, guys. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna spoil the pool for you. It's probably the most. <laughs> yeah, this this adventure is not just weird. It is definitely a, a, a horror. It's definitely in the horror genre. Feet planted firmly. And yeah, 18 plus content too. Ooh, there's a face you don't want to see in a dark alley. <laughs> Terror from the Deep, that's another good one. Uh, let's see, timelines. I don't remember that one off the top of my head, but yeah. Then you get to the actual monolith, and again, you could make the valley trip as long as you want and add all kind of strange things. I could actually see in my head a horror-based TV series just in the valley and have it run like Lost or something. And they the characters will just go wandering this valley uh, encountering one weird thing after another, and it would be like, I don't know, it'd be like a 12-episode series that you'd see on Netflix or something, and yeah, I'd watch that, and you would end it with the monolith, and then have like a TV movie uh, ending the series, you know, like a two-hour movie that ends the series at the actual monolith. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually kind of really excited about this one. Uh, <laughs> this is a killer adventure, man. I haven't seen anything quite like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is some mind-bending here. And, of course, there's some trademark stuff like you see in a lot of Lamentations uh, stuff, the world inside the monolith. Uh, for example... Uh, the Game Master being privy to what the heck is going on, to things that your players are very unlikely to ever figure out on their own, like, ever. You would have to set up something, uh, set up a way for them to of actually know what's going on. But the Game Master, the referee, he knows what's up, and the players will never figure it out, uh, figure out exactly what's up. They might figure out how to deal with it, but they won't know the how or why of what was going on. And, uh, yeah. If, in my book, that's actually pretty scary. And it, the more I think about it, a lot of horror movies are like that. I mean, let's say you've got a monster, uh, a monster movie. Where you got, like, I don't know, it could be a monster or a supernatural being. And for some reason it attacks at a certain time and it attacks in a certain way and the only way to get rid of it is X and none of it makes any sense. I mean, think about it. I mean, uh, why is it a stake through the heart that kills Dracula? I don't know. It just does. <laughs> you know, it's that sort of thing. You might figure out the how, you will never figure out the why. Yeah, um, I don't want to spoil too much of this adventure. I really don't. Now, I will give a little heads up to referees. When you get into the monolith especially, you may want to have some cliff notes on the places your characters are going to, your players are going to visit. Um... Maybe like on a little index card or something. And uh, like bullet points on what's going to happen. There's, there's a lot of stuff that can possibly happen. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> this one's a winner, guys. <laughs> Definitely a winner. Uh, I'm not sure if it's my favorite, but man, I, it when I finished reading it, it sure it sure made the runner up. That's for sure. Wow. Um. Uh, okay. Yeah, a little shorter than I expected. I hope this breaks the 10 minute mark. <laughs> but uh, this is your RPG archivist. I think I'm done. Oh, there is one more thing I need to tell you guys. I have reviewed each one of the adventures in Anthology Fire. Uh, I have completed each adventure individually. I am going to do one more video uh, doing an overview of the book itself. And once I've done that, we are done with Adventure Anthology Fire, and that will conclude the Month of Fire. This has been your RPG Archivist, and see ya!